Hey folks, this is Market Copters, Crawlers, and Planes, RC Pacific Northwest. Thanks for tuning in. Uh, a few days ago, I posted some video about my uh, uh, basically bush bush copter conversion that I'm doing uh, by designing and building and installing and uh, flight testing and uh, trimming uh, floats, do-it-yourself floats for the, for a helicopter. In this case, it's the Blade 230S V2. Uh, anyway, I made a couple videos, but they weren't very good, so I wanted to kind of back up, start over. And show you, uh, you know, how I built uh, the floats and so on and so forth. So there they are. There's the copter, the beautiful Blade 230 SV2. I'm in my car right now, which is not unusual. It's the uh, my mobile RC flight unit, mobile RC truck garage. As you can see, it's raining, but when it stops raining, I'm gonna take this bird out and do a a nice extended flight uh, test video off of land, which is what I do first. And once I put, I've done this before uh, with the Blade 150S. Uh, helicopter I made floats for it went through the same uh, trial and error process that I'm going through now and so the first thing is I put everything together to the best of my estimation then I put the helicopter in the water and see if it floats if there's enough buoyancy to support the helicopter uh, with room to spare and see if it floats in a balanced manner right so we're gonna show a video of that when it stops raining of, the, of it floating in the water not taking off just floating in the water the float test it's a float buoyancy and balance test so we're gonna do that a video about that here in a little bit uh, but right now I'm just showing you you know how, how I built it with the materials that I used and everything like that all right so to start off with well we'll take a little bit closer look now a little bit closer look at this setup here so obviously you've got your flotation uh, pontoons there Okay, and then obviously you have to have some sort of a frame which uh, allows you to ins uh, install the uh, floats on the helicopter. And the frame also, of course, provides uh, rigidity to the pontoons. All right. Pontoon rigidity, baby. All right. Okay, so there it is. A little close up ish. Look at it. And, uh, yeah. I'm pretty happy with the way they are coming out. I'm really happy with the way they're coming out, actually. Uh, sorry about the video uh, quality here not being uh, fantastic because I'm in my car. But there you go. You get the idea. Now, uh, first we'll show you how I, what I used to make it and everything like that and some, some, some things you want to consider in case you want to put floats on your helicopter. Um, the first thing I would say, well, we'll get, we'll get to that. So, uh, well, we'll get to that right now. Uh, if you want to do floats on your helicopter, I would say you should have a Blade 150S or bigger, right? To handle the extra weight and drag and whatnot, uh, I suggest uh, flying in safe. I, 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 su I suggest doing this. It's not required, but I suggest doing this with a safe equipped helicopter so that uh, some helicopters, like the Blade 150S, it will oscillate with floats in flight unless you use safe. So I recommend a helicopter that has safe at least available. It may be required to fly with floats, it may be a, a good idea uh, either way, but I recommend having that uh, option available. Okay, and then you want to, you know, obviously a high-quality hel helicopter like the Blade. I think the 230, the 150S did beautifully on floats. I think the 230S is even even more ideal. Okay, so basically what I did here is, first thing I did is I bought about a six-foot length of this here uh, pipe insulation material, right? And I believe that's for a one-inch pipe. I believe it's for a one-inch pipe. I'm, I'm, I'm guessing on that. One inch, that looks like about an inch. Anyway, I took this, uh, about six feet of this uh, one-inch pipe insulation, which cost me $1.67. And I cut it to size, as you can see. Now we don't want water going in the hole, so I cut and installed and glued in place end caps. Put end caps in here. Oh, we just can't get any light on the situation. There we go, I put end caps on the floats. See that, front and rear. And that keeps uh, water from coming in. Yes, yeah, that keeps water from coming in. Okay, and then I used a bag of uh, is a bag of uh, 15 uh, cable ties, 8 inch length, right? And this cost me, uh, what, $4. So, so, so far I went into this project for uh, $5.67. Yeah. Okay, I bought some wood glue here uh, for the gluing of the, the, the frame, which is wood. That was about 7 bucks, but it's waterproof, or at least it's highly water resistant. It dries fast. It's good stuff, so I got that. So now we're at about uh, eight bucks, uh, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, thirteen dollars and change. Okay, thirteen dollars and change. I bought this wood dowel, a uh, one wood dowel, which is about f four feet in length. I believe it's basswood. Uh, that was two dollars. 
So we're at $15 for this project right now. And then I bought some crazy glue right here. Uh, hobby shops are closed. So I got at a drugstore, I got this a super glue gel. Okay, and that was for gluing. So first I took the dowels and I cut a dowel for each pontoon as a stiffener. Then I glued that dowel. Come on, focus. Then I glued that dowel with super glue to the foam, right? Uh, then I began, then I measured and cut uh, my cross pieces here, my spreaders, if you will. And I had to measure those out. I had to eyeball that and estimate with that. Uh, but what you want is you want to have a pretty wide stance for the helicopter so that she's stable, stable on the water, both, you know, uh, forward to back and, and, and left to right, you know, or port to starboard. So I got the stance that I thought was right. I cut the spreaders for that. And I used that nice wood glue to glue those uh, spreaders, to glue those spreaders in place. See if we can zoom in. No, it's, it's a zoom in action. There we go. See, I, there's a spreader glued into place. There's another one there. So I glued those spreaders into place. Okay. And then this is a piece that you see dead center of the screen. Now this here, that's glued on top of, of the ends of the spreaders, right? So that keeps the spreaders from being able to lift up and out of there. And it just uh, provides a lot more glue surface, right? You got glue top and bottom on this spreader. Spreader's at the tip of my finger. And then see, you got all this glue stuff in there same thing here this little piece of wood uh, here piece of dowel that is also holding the rear spreader so all these uh, spreaders are are locked to the to the uh the float spar if you will and uh that makes the helicopter really solid on on the float frame and it makes the floats themselves really solid um and then i use zip ties the same zip ties to go ahead and, and attach the helicopter and you have to do it in such a way that it can't move so you can see I've got it really securely wrapped around various things and it can't slide, it can't move, or anything like that. Now, when I do my flow test, I'll see if she balances the way that I think she needs to. If that's good, then we'll do an extremely careful maiden water test. Well, we'll do the ground flight uh, test first. Then we'll do an extremely careful uh, water test and that's gonna be simply spooling up with great caution and then seeing if I can lift off. If there's any problems with balance, I may have to move the helicopter a little bit back on the floats or a little bit forward on the floats uh, you know, before I can go beyond a spool up, but the spool up will tell me how she's going to behave. Once I get her, uh, positioned correctly on the floats forward to aft, uh, then I can actually go ahead and, and once I've actually hovered, and once I've actually been able to lift off and hover and land, you know, having found the, uh, the right position for the helicopter and the floats, well, then I can go ahead and do the first actual maiden flight off of the water. Okay. So some things to take into consideration, uh, make sure you have, uh, extra float length in the back. To accommodate the weight and the the uh, the tail heavy situation that your tail rotor boom and your tail motor cause, right? You can see I got more floats, more float in the back of the skids than I do in the front of the skids, and that's to make sure you got that tail boom fully supported, so it's not going to dip into the water. Uh, the other thing is, as I mentioned a minute ago, you got to have plenty of stance to make sure it's going to be super solid side to side, especially when spooling up. Okay, and spooling up's the most dangerous time because it's the most, it's the least smooth. Okay. Uh, and then you have to make sure that your floats are buoyant enough for the helicopter. These, uh, when the helicopter's in the water from previous testing, uh, uh, this, the, the helicopter, uh, when the helicopter's sitting in the water, it only goes uh, down to halfway up the floats, right? So when she sits in the water, those floats are only immersed 50%. That's, I'd say, about perfect. And she doesn't sit nose heavy or tail heavy in the water. That's also what you want, okay? And then again, you want to cap the ends or, or do whatever you want to do to make sure water doesn't get in there. Also, I paint. I paint the outside of this foam to seal it. I think it's closed cell foam, but just to be sure, I, I paint the exterior real real good and the end cap areas just to actually further seal everything, okay? Um, and then, okay, so really that's about it. It's gotta be strong, it's gotta be light, um, and so on. So there we go. Uh, so the next thing we'll do is, uh, is uh, what, we'll do a, a float test to see how she floats right now. Uh, also, I, 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 uh, m I moved my position of a helicopter on the floats a little bit based on my previous videos. So that's another reason I'm redoing the video. So I've uh, done a little bit of tweaking. So we'll do a float test on this next, see how she floats in the water. After that, we'll do a nice full uh, flight, taking off from the ground, flying over ground and landing on the ground. Because you want to, if there's any problems, you want to find that out when you're flying over land, not over water. Because if, so, if she goes down unexpectedly on the land, uh, especially with this helicopter, she, she's probably going to be okay. Uh, if you're if you're flying, uh, you know, carefully 
Uh, but if you land in the water, well, that's just not a good thing. Um, now, the Blade 150S, I had completely submerged in the water upside down for 20 to 25 minutes, dried her out, flew her, and she was fine. And uh, so that's something I can tell you. You don't want to get these completely immersed, but I've, my, my experience is that they'll handle it big time, which is pretty impressive. Um, okay, then. And I'll give you some tips about doing your maiden because there's some things you want to know about how you start up and how you try to lift up. And you got to use some different techniques. Okay, so there you go. That's the project. Blade 230 SV2 with floats. Uh, you can make some for yours if you want to. And the only tools... Gosh, this thing keeps going out of focus. The only tools I used was a pair of scissors to cut the... Uh, foam and I used uh, some pliers to pull on the zip ties. I used uh, 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 what else? Um, scissors, pliers, and a saw to cut the dowel. All right, thanks for watching. Thanks for subscribing. Stay tuned for the new float test on this and for the uh, a nice uh, flight test which will be done over the land. See, this camera will not focus. What the hell? All right, then. Stay tuned. Stay well. Stay apart. Stay safe. Bye-bye.